Hey guys, Brandon here, and I'm starting off this week's review with Batman 15, the next chapter of The Death in the Family. This book is really effed up. Like, we're finally starting to see the Joker's plans take place, where they're taking place, which has me super excited because this has been going on right under Batman's nose this entire time. Uh, you find out of a little secret Bruce Wayne is kept from the rest of the family, you know, all the Robins, Batgirl, Alfred, everything, that he never thought would amount to anything and he still doesn't believe is the reason for all of this happening. But you, you're starting to see just a general sort of distrust that everybody has for him when dealing with the Joker. And Batman, like, he doesn't even care at this point. He just wants to get the Joker and that's all he's concerned about. And it's it's almost it ends on a really weird note with uh, when he's talking to Nightwing. It's just really like, stop talking. I have stuff to do. Stay here. Nobody help me out. I got this. So it's almost like he's underestimating everything. The Jock backup story, well, art by Jock. The backup story is awesome. We get the Riddler, and it has me really excited because it looks like you really are starting to see all these other characters or all these other villains maybe playing a part in what the Joker has planned. So. This issue was awesome. Cannot wait for the next one. I'm giving it five out of five nerd skulls. So Superboy number 15 came out this week by DC Comics and uh, it, was, it was all right. It, it, it is the crossover between Superman and Superboy for the hell on earth storyline that's going on right now between uh, Superman, Superboy and Supergirl, uh, of course, and Action Comics as well, but uh, in a, a much smaller way. This is the first one I've read that's actually not Action Comics and I'm not, I'm not really into it yet, but the artwork was fun. Tom DeFalco's writing is uh, pretty streamlined and he does a good job of getting us to that next page and, and um, leaving us with something to want to read another issue. So um, I'm going to give it three out of five Nerd Skulls, but be weary, it's a Superboy book and I just do not like new Superboy. All right guys, Kevin here with my comic reviews this week. I got to read The Victories, number five of five. So the story's done, which kind of sucks, but it doesn't seem like it's actually going to be done, which is awesome. Uh, but it really takes a huge turn. And I think I missed number four because I don't remember all these crazy like, things that they're talking about uh, uh, happening, like the, the, the news you find out. I do not want to ruin it for anyone, but it is pretty serious stuff. And it's, it's something that's been coming out a lot lately. And there's been a huge controversies at a lot of different places surrounding things like this. So it's... It's really like it hits home for a lot of people and people can really like connect to it, but it's, it's really messed up and it just makes you kind of think differently on superheroes and what might be for certain characters and certain mentorships and things like that. It's crazy. You probably know what I'm talking about, but just check it out. It, it's actually a really great book. The art is same as always. You know, it's really gritty, really dark, really crazy. And the Jackal character is just really messed up and just messed up, really, really messed up. It's, he's, he's, he's a great villain. I can't wait to see more of him. I really hope they do more of these books. Personally, this issue, I'm only gonna give it four Nerd Skulls, because it didn't give me everything I wanted in the ending, and it was a little cloudy at certain points, but still, awesome book, definitely recommend it, so go and check this one out. All right, I got a chance to read Ultimate Comics X-Men, number 20, Reservation X. I like what they're doing with the mutants here. Uh, they, they had the cure handed out. There's only 20 of them left, and now they have this whole land just to themselves, no one can mess with, called Utopia. And I was, I was kind of lost. Like, the last issue ended, and I didn't know where we're going with this. I mean, you, you've cut the whole mutant race down to 20 people. You have them in the middle of nowhere. Where are we going to get a conflict from here? You know, I, I just I didn't see where it was going. I felt like all these Ultimate books are written by writers that just have an ending to their story and they're like, well, I'm done with it, I'll hand it off to someone else. But this issue kind of regains my, my trust in this book. I've, I've liked it so far and it looks like they've got some interesting directions they can go in. So like I said, I thought we were just gonna run out of stuff, but they, they open up a couple plot lines here that's keeping me interested. I'm gonna keep reading this. I'm giving it three and a half out of five Nerd Skulls. Fantastic Four number two came out this week, uh, a part of the new Marvel Now, and it is an exciting one. I went into this series not really uh, knowing much about it, but not really hoping for much either because uh, I feel like the, uh, they're trying to make more money out of it. And with this issue, it really set me backwards though. I, 
Um, Matt Fraction, I'm, I have mixed feelings about. I went into his Thor run with a lot of excitement, um, but I was really let down. And I really wasn't sure where Matt Fraction belonged in Marvel right now. And I think that it is, he's finally found his place. Uh, he really needs to be writing a Fantastic Four book. And in the first issue, he talks briefly about he's, how he's always wished to uh, write this book and it's finally happening for him. And I, I feel like that's probably something you just say whenever you start a new book. But um, he's really excited to do this book and you can tell in his writing. So I'm going to give Fantastic Four number two, five out of five Nerd Skulls. All right, guys, so I also get to read Cable and X-Force number one. And, whoa, crazy. Now, I haven't been reading X-Force all that much, but it's a cool team. But, you know, I don't want that nitty-gritty X-Men. I like it a little more homey and kitty and, like, not too crazy. They, they, can, they can mess stuff up, but I don't like my X-Men to kill people. And that's pretty much what this issue started with. And I love Cable, so I was kind of like, man, oh, this is... No bueno, but you, you get a little more info about what's going on and, and it, it seems like things are totally not okay, totally not normal. Cable's kind of like breaking down still, even though like he can't just live a normal life and not have the legacy virus in him. So being that he doesn't have that in his body, it's like his, everything's going crazy with him. His powers, he, his arms all janky and stuff. Luckily Forge is there to make him awesome, cool new armor. And it's cool because that's what Forge does and it's cool to see him there. Oh, I've been just praying for him to be back at that point and they've been doing some crazy stuff with him well, like last time I read him he was talking to himself and you know crazy and I don't know it was, it was really weird so it's nice just to get everyone on one path again um, one thing that kind of upset me about this book is after reading Thunderbolts uh, this I felt like this should have been on that same par like it should have been gory just as gory just as crazy just as action-packed and it wasn't it, it was like a little bit in the beginning and then not really in the middle, and then at the end it was kind of like, eh, well, we're getting there. So hopefully in the next couple issues it picks up a little bit more, but it's nice to see the Hope and Cable story continue somewhere, and this is going to be it. So stay tuned if you want to uh, see how that unfolds. This issue, though, I'm going to give it three and a half nerd skulls. Got to read Green Lantern Corps, number 15. Uh, last issue ended with Guy Gardner being tossed out of the Lantern Corps and back to Earth. He is no longer Green Lantern, and he's really not handling it well. Uh, he goes back to kind of reconnect with his family since they were, you know, thrown up on the Justice League Watchtower for protection from whatever he thought was going on. And it's sort of him just dealing with not being a Green Lantern anymore and not really not really having that power. He's, he's not telling anybody that, though, yet. Nobody really knows about it. But it, it's... I mean, I've never felt for Guy Gardner before, and I never really liked him, but reading this issue, I'm totally sympathetic towards him. I hope we see him back as a Green Lantern. I'm sure we will, but I hope this just isn't a permanent thing, because I miss seeing him with the ring. You also got Jon Stewart's uh, story here with Mogo and, you know, re uh, Mogo rebuilding itself from him destroying the planet. So all in all, it's a very interesting read. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five nerd skulls. So Avengers Arena came out this week with one of the coolest arc names I've heard from Marvel in a while, Murder World. It is written by Dennis Hopeless, and it is an exciting book. It's uh, hasn't been this exciting to see this team together since the beginning of Avengers Academy, which I really enjoyed uh, in the beginning, but it really got boring towards the end, and I ended up taking it off my list. This gave me another chance, and although it's obviously an, an homage to, to Battle Royale, as you can see from the picture behind me, uh, it was definitely its own kind of story, and the ending will definitely surprise you. You're going to want to pick this up this week, because it's probably going to be talked about uh, for a while what happens in this issue. So pick it up. Avengers Arena number one, I'm going to give it five out of five nerd skulls. All right, guys, I got to read Before Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan number three this week, and it's wrapping up. Uh, it's only going to be a four-issue story arc. Uh, and everything else is pretty much wrapping up. So it's kind of bittersweet, but it's also really cool to see more of Dr. Manhattan's childhood in this issue. And you, you get uh, his like relationship with his mom and his dad, and you see that a lot, lot, lot more. And it makes so much more sense as to why he is the way he is. But also, on the, on the other part of the issue, you get a glimpse into how he kind of made his life the way it turned out and how he limited his choices and he has the power to go back and change things and do things the way he wants them and if you know I, I don't have to have these powers I can grow old with this person blah, 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 all that stuff if he goes through it he goes through the motions and you kind of see his 
reasonings behind everything. And it's, it's actually really, really deep and really, really awesome. I love it. I really, really enjoy this book, uh, especially with Adam Hughes' artwork on it. You can't really go wrong with that, especially when he's doing all these crazy, cool, like, layouts. Everything is different. It looks weird. You have to turn the page around to read it. I love when comic books do that. And this one did it perfectly. Just a really well executed book. Um, eh, a little slow. And next issue is probably going to bang it out of the park, but this is only going to get a four out of five Nerd Skull book. All right, I got TMNT number 17. This book continues to be awesome. They keep folding in older characters that I remember from the animated series, and they're doing it in totally new ways, new and really interesting ways of just bringing everything in together in this short period. I mean, we're 17 issues in. It's a lot, but it's not nearly as much as I thought it would take to see some of the characters that we're seeing. This book is still a lot of fun. You need to be reading it. I'm gonna give it four to five Nerd Skulls. A new number one out of Image Comics, Change number one, uh, written by Alice Cott and uh, drawn by Morgan Jeske. Uh, I, I went through the motions reading this book, not really uh, interested in what was going on in the first half. Uh, uh, the artwork was definitely interesting. Uh, it's something that I haven't really seen as far as image goes for a long time, a, a weird type of telling the story. It, it kind of reminded me of uh, uh, Jonathan Hickman's indie books um, in a way, but it really didn't, this book really didn't grab my attention until uh, towards the end when someone's head, uh, skull gets cracked open, which was really awesome and it gets crazier from there um, and it ends off in an insane way that I really had no clue was coming towards my way. So uh, I want to recommend it and I'm gonna give it three and a half nerd skulls, change number one. All right guys, I get to read Conan number 11 and I gotta say, I love this book. It's one of my favorites and I know not a lot of people are reading it and a lot of people need to read it. I, I, you really should be doing this. Brian Wood is a great, that's like an understatement. He's a ridiculously good writer. If you if if you can get a hands on Northlanders, that's another great story. It's a long, it's similar to this vein, like the same genre. But this book alone is is really really awesome. It's I thought it was going to be a two part story. I thought this was going to be the end of this little story arc. I think there's one more, which I'm really stoked on now because this issue really pulls at the heartstrings, especially with Conan. You don't see that a lot. He's always, I don't know, I've said this before, he's always that, you know, hulking, I'm just going to use a sword and kill everyone, and blah, blah, blah. You see that, that's like the original movie. Not at all in this, in this story, especially this one. You really see how he cares about this one person. He wants them to survive, but it's pretty much the odds are stacked against him. And how he comes to terms with that, it's really, really riveting. It's, it, and for a comic book to be that, it's really hard, and it, this one does that perfectly. I cannot praise that enough. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 Nerd Skulls. The artwork was really, really good. It's not Becky Cloonan, but it's still pretty damn good. A very different book uh, I checked out this week was called Godsend by About Time Comics, uh, written by Lee Giles, and the art was by Oski Yanez, and the art was definitely the most interesting part. Um, it uh, reminded me a lot of Steve Dillon from uh, Preacher fame, and it was kind of uh, definitely in the facial expressions that people had and everything like that, but uh, I was wondering throughout the book whether... Um, this was a religious title or something like that. I was really confused, but then at the end it gets bloody and gory and you have this really uh, awesome looking spawn type character. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing down the road. Um, we'll have to find out, but I do kind of want to check out another issue, but mainly for the Oski Yanez artwork. It was really exciting to see such a, something so similar to one of my favorite artists, Steve Dillon. So uh, check it out. I'm going to give this one two and a half nerd skulls. 